Hello everyone. In this video we'll be exploring the history of the Delta Force series, which made its debut on PCs in 1998. But before we dive deep into the topic, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Let's jump right in. The game was developed by Novologic, the studio responsible for the Comanche series. For this, they crafted their own graphic engine named Voxel Space, which utilized voxel graphics. It was first deployed in the game Comanche, Maximum Overkill, released in 1992. Remarkably, in terms of graphical quality, it was outstanding for its time. For comparison, Wolfenstein 3D was released the same year. With the increasing popularity of FPS games in the late 90s, the folks at Nova Logic aspired to create their own title in the genre, but with a more tactical twist. They employed their upgraded voxel space engine for this endeavour. On November 1st, 1998, Delta Force was launched. It was envisioned as a military simulation, loosely inspired by the real Delta Force unit, which was founded in 1977 in response to the escalating threat of terrorism. The unit primarily consists of Green Berets and Army Rangers who have undergone specialized training. Importantly, they are equipped with the best military gear available at the time. Unlike many other FPS games of its era, Nova Logic infused Delta Force with missions grounded in potential real-world terrorist hotspots. While the gameplay is linear, it offers players the liberty to choose the sequence of their missions. The mission scenarios vary widely, from operations in Peru to bioterrorism threats in Indonesia. Thanks to the implemented technology, gameplay unfolds across vast open terrains, a feature that distinguished the game from other FPS titles during its release. Your in-game objectives are diverse, ranging from intercepting convoys to undertaking more intricate stealth tasks. The weapons you opt for will significantly influence your gameplay style. In addition to firearms, a variety of supportive equipment such as rockets and explosive charges is at your disposal. Basic weapon attributes are visible during the equipment selection process. Delta Force stands out from other realistic simulations. It's fundamentally an action-packed game. Contrary to titles like Rainbow Six, to which many critics compared it, you can't control your team directly, and interactions with fellow members are limited to basic commands. The enemies are endowed with a decent AI, quickly spotting you and even detecting your shots from afar. While sometimes these foes passively stand at their posts, once alerted, they don't hold back. They always succumb to one shot, compensating with their, their numbers, while the player can take two or three. Therefore, staying vigilant is paramount in this game. Uh, it's easy to die, but living is a challenge. Graphically, Delta Force was satisfactory, but not revolutionary. Owing to the graphic engine in use, graphic accelerators weren't supported. This limitation on one hand capped the graphical prowess, but on the flip side, many players with PCs are devoid of graphic accelerators, which weren't commonplace among gamers in 1998, could still run the game smoothly on high settings. An interesting tidbit, unlike many games of the time, bullets here obey the laws of physics. So when shooting over distances, it's essential to account for the range. Unfortunately, in modern times, due to the limited resolution, the game often becomes a pixel hunt. In multiplayer mode, the game takes on a different dimension, resembling Quake more, becoming a typical shooter. This is not a drawback. At that time, the market was not yet saturated or dominated by CS, COD or other battlefields, and many people used it. Delta Force was warmly received by critics and players. Ratings usually ranged around 8, 9, 10. You can purchase the game on the Steam platform, where it has an overall rating of very positive, based on 90% positive reviews out of 497. This shows that many players still appreciate the game. After the success of the first part, players didn't have to wait long for a sequel. Uh, in the following year, 1999, we got part two. The creators stuck to what worked. Delta Force 2 Inches also relies on voxel graphics. However, just like its predecessor, its gameplay balances out any visual shortcomings. Delta Force 2 Inches provides players with 45 missions, combining both campaigns and standalone scenarios. In many of them, you face terrorist factions operating alone or with computer allies. The missions vary in nature, from covert attacks on enemy bases to rescue missions or the recovery of stolen goods. The game also offers an advanced mission editor, allowing the creation of complex scenarios. The strength of Delta Force 2 Inches lies in its well-designed missions. They are not only more challenging than in the original, but also seem more grounded in reality. 
The gameplay is similar to its predecessor, emphasizing long-range shooting and dynamic skirmishes. Many missions offer various approaches to the objective, and some have a time limit. Direct assaults are risky, making each mission unique and challenging. As I mentioned earlier, one of the problems with Delta Force 2 inches is its graphics engine. Using the improved Voxel Space 32 engine, the game has its visual limitations. The graphics were far from the top at the time, although some elements, like snowstorms, were well done. Special recognition goes to the sound effects, which enhance the game's realism. The enemy AI still generally behaves well enough for its production year. New features include parachute jumps at the beginning of some missions and an improved user interface. However, just like in the original Delta Force, computer allies are less helpful if you don't stick to the preset mission plan. Again, the online mode was popular with players, bringing a lot of joy and boosting sales. In conclusion, Delta Force 2 Inches is a solid single-player game with an extensive multiplayer component. Although it was evident that this formula was slowly running out and rival studios were not sleeping. At its release, it received decent ratings, but generally weaker than the first part. Just like its predecessor, it is available on the Steam platform with an average rating of very positive, based on 85% reviews out of 378. As they say, strike while the iron is hot. And so for the third year in a row, players received another installment of Delta Force, this time subtitled Land Warrior, utilizing the same, though notably enhanced, Voxel Space 32 inches engine. It must be admitted that the graphics have slightly improved, locations seem more detailed and larger, and the terrain isn't as pixelated. Delta Force, Land Warrior, employs a new hybrid engine that uses hardware acceleration for polygonal buildings and other structures while retaining the voxel-based terrain of its predecessors, but with improved resolution. Draw distances remain similar to earlier engine versions, and maps loop in all directions, eliminating visible map boundaries. The new engine also allows for tunnel complex creation, which is utilized in the campaign. The interface was also revamped to be more modern with added details. Unfortunately, the animations are stiff. Despite the improvements, the graphics still lagged behind the industry leaders. Similar to the graphics, the sound effects in Land Warrior are good, but not exceptional for their time. Gun sounds are realistic, with heavier weapons sounding appropriate. Regrettably, Land Warrior has limited ambient sounds, making many areas feel lifeless though you can hear enemies shouting or emitting pain sounds from great distances. Delta Force Land Warrior offers 30 missions, including a training course, 10 quick missions, and 19 campaign-related missions. There's also a mission editor. Missions take place in exotic locations worldwide, such as Africa or South America. You must destroy a mercenary group's power plant, eliminate a paid assassin intending to join a major drug cartel, and rescue VIPs from a fortified compound. Night missions add tension. You hear gunfire, but can't pinpoint the shooter. And enemies might appear right beside you before you can react. Before starting a mission, you receive a briefing and a can choose the appropriate equipment. Egypt that However, you don't create detailed plans, as in games like the Rainbow Six series. The missions often begin with a helicopter landing or even a parachute jump, adding immersion. You then use your HUD to navigate to set checkpoints, which you can edit during the mission. In practice, most missions are solo endeavors, although computer-controlled allies may accompany you. The interface, however, makes issuing commands to them cumbersome. The game's missions were a strong point, offering varied challenges. Nevertheless, today's players also expect games to have random enemy placements, making gameplay more dynamic and unpredictable. The artificial intelligence in Delta Force, Land Warrior, left something to be desired. Sometimes, enemies simply stand still while their comrades are slaughtered nearby. Delta Force Land Warrior also introduced some innovations to the series, such as, let's say, realistic weapon effects. The crosshair sways when aiming. The multiplayer mode again offered some variety, but by this time, games like CS, Quake 3 and Unreal had already been released, which largely dominated the multiplayer arena. Reviewers again gave the game slightly lower scores than its predecessor. Something evidently had to change in the series for it to get back on track. In 2002, an independent expansion was released by Zombie Studios titled Delta Force Task Force Dagger. It wasn't what the players were expecting. Primarily, it added extra missions. The most significant difference is that players can now choose from one of 10 available Special Forces units, including SEAL Team 6, Green Berets, and the British Special Air Service. Each unit has individual strengths and weaknesses. For example, 
Some agents are excellent snipers, while others can take more damage. However, in terms of mechanics, these factions are identical to the various playable Delta Force characters available in Land Warrior. That's it. Overall, players and critics were not enchanted by this extension, with scores typically hovering around 4, 6, 10. In the same year, a version was released for the dying platform, the first PlayStation. Fortunately, the PS2 was compatible with PSX discs, allowing the title to reach a broader audience. This time, Rebellion Developments was behind the game, with Nova Logic as the publisher. Unfortunately, it was evident that players were dealing with a game designed for the previous generation. The game vastly differs from what we know from the PC. Open maps disappeared, replaced by linear corridors. This part resembles more of a classic shooter with stealth elements, quite poorly implemented ones. In general, we have 12 missions to complete, and unlike the previous parts, we play with a predefined character and equipment, removing the choice of weaponry. Cutscenes were also added, making the game more cinematic. Overall, the game received mixed reviews, but even a mediocre shooter on the PX was considered a success. And finally, the year 2003 arrived, bringing with it what many consider the best installment of the series, Delta Force, Black Hawk Down, based on the book, not the movie, of the same title. At last, Nova Logic delivered something other than a reheated dish. The graphics engine named Black Hawk Engine was entirely changed and first used in 2001 for the game Comanche 4. So, history came full circle. A new engine was first introduced in the Comanche series, and in 2001 it was quite impressive. Unfortunately for Delta Force, by 2003 we received titles like the first Call of Duty and a year earlier, Battlefield 1942. The game's narrative backdrop is set in the early 90s, during the peacekeeping operation in Somalia, led by the Unified Task Force. The main locations are the Juba Valley and the capital, Mogadishu. The game also features a mission editor, allowing players to create their own scenarios. Players step into the shoes of a soldier from Task Force Ranger and lead a team composed of Huck, Mother and Preacher. The team's mission is to participate in the Unified Task Force peacekeeping operation during the Civil War in Somalia. Starting from the third mission, the player continues as the same soldier but is assigned to the 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, which takes part in Operation Gothic Serpent in Mogadishu. In the later stages of the game, the protagonist is transferred to the 3rd Ranger Battalion and the 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta. In the final mission, the player faces an alternative scenario where, along with their team, they must eliminate Mohammed Farah Aydid. The mechanics of Delta Force Black Hawk Down differ from previous series entries. Instead of the series' typical open space combat, the game focuses on missions in urban environments, with more intricate scenarios similar to those in Medal of Honor Allied Assault. Some iconic features of the series, such as ballistics, have been simplified, placing more emphasis on dynamic action. During missions, the player is supported by an AI squad, to which they can issue basic commands. The game features an extensive multiplayer mode, available both on LAN and online. It supported simultaneous play with up to 50 players. In multiplayer, players had a choice of various game modes, such as Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch and King of the Hill. There was also the option to choose from several character classes, each with individual traits. The game was generally well received by players and critics, with scores typically around 8, 10. In January 2004, we received an expansion that included two new campaigns, Colombian and Iranian, as well as several new weapons. The expansion received mixed reviews. In 2005, ports for Microsoft's and Sony's consoles were released, specifically for the first Xbox and PS2. The Xbox version had more in common with the original due to its superior hardware compared to the PS2. The PS2 port even had a different graphics engine, Asura, known from games like Aliens vs Predator from 1999. In April of the same year, Another installment titled Delta Force Extreme was released. It was somewhat a remake of the original from 1998, built on the Black Hawk engine. But unfortunately, it had fewer missions than the first installment. The graphics hadn't changed from the previous game and began to appear more dated, especially due to the lack of detail in the environment. The graphics were at best possible. The enemy AI is usually duller than walks straight into the line of our gunfire. Sometimes they're laid down but they usually charge at us, as if resigned to their fate, ready to take the virtual bullet that separates their pixelated souls from their rigid bodies. 
Sometimes they pretend nothing is happening, even when a camp of their comrades is, is wiped out 200, 300 meters away. A novel feature was the ability to drive vehicles, which added some variety and worked even better in multiplayer mode. Mm. We no longer see basic weapon parameters, and we also don't need to select a pistol, we always have the same one. And it's terrible, accurate only up to 20 meters, and you have to pump half a magazine into an enemy to finish them off, or perhaps almost half. It's more of a last resort weapon. The game truly shone in its multiplayer mode. I personally remember playing in 2007 or 2008 in a demo that included this multiplayer mode, and surprisingly there were quite a few people on the servers. At least, that's how I remember it. Delta Force Extreme wasn't exactly what fans were waiting for. A big plus was the price, which was $20 on the day of release. Fortunately, at that price, it wasn't such a bad deal. Reviewers weren't impressed with the game, typically giving it scores of 5, 6, and occasionally 8 or 10. Like other PC releases, the game is available on the Steam platform and has an overall very positive rating based on 83% positive reviews out of 134 in total. In 2006, another port of Delta Force Black Hawk Down was released, this time for mobile phones. It attempted to emulate mechanics known from larger platforms on mobile devices. As we know, back then, phones were not known for their performance, so everything had to be tailored to the capabilities of those phones. The graphics are sufficiently detailed, as are the sound effects. A year later, in 2007, we received a sequel based on the same principles. In 2008, a continuation of the main series titled Delta Force Angel Falls was announced. Players were presented with images from the upcoming sequel, which promised to be what fans were waiting for. On their official website, a poster appeared along with the information coming soon. The developers promised an entirely new engine offering modern graphical effects, vehicle controls, an improved multiplayer mode, and much more. Unfortunately, 2009 came around, and instead of the anticipated Delta Force Angel Falls, players received a rehashed Delta Force Extreme 2 inches on the same engine as the 2003 installment, which by then was no longer top tier. The single player gameplay in Delta Force Extreme 2 inches revolves around two campaigns, each with five missions. The main story is about a terrorist and drug lord named Desert Rat. However, the narrative is superficial, primarily presented through pre-mission briefings. Regardless of the context, the main objective is to eliminate enemies and blow up anything that can be blown up the change of landscapes, from jungles to snowy terrains to deserts, was meant to add variety. But the outcome was predictable. A regeneration mode was introduced to modernize the game. Enemies no longer always fall with one shot, usually two. The first shot barely phases them, more like a mosquito bite. Because if, for instance, a bee bit them, they might react. Their aiming accuracy is also wildly inconsistent. At times, you can watch an enemy for a while, as they seem to process what's happening and at other times they give you no chance to spot them. But overall, the AI in this game is handicapped, and behaves primarily stupidly. Missions aren't always intuitive. Often, even after completing all tasks, the mission wouldn't end. Your squad, consisting of several companions, isn't always helpful. In most cases, they leave you alone in combat, though there are exceptions. When a player falls in battle, the game restarts from the last checkpoint, but defeated enemies don't respawn. This simplifies gameplay, but the checkpoint placements are not always ideal. The game also offers multiplayer gameplay, seemingly ambitious. The problem was that there were numerous other, generally better, multiplayer games available at the time. Shooting weapons lacks weight and power, and the guns are overly precise. Enemies can be eliminated from great distances, even with a machine gun. The game's physics isn't convincing either. Vehicles seem rigid and clumsy, and collisions are not satisfying. The game also has various bugs, such as teleporting through walls or outside of helicopters. The graphics were a disaster, remember, the same year saw the release of games like Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, Operation Flashpoint, Dragon Rising, and two years earlier, Crisis. The developers sometimes didn't even bother removing grass from building interiors, which were traditionally severely lacking in detail. Even four years earlier, it was clearly lagging behind industry leaders. To put it mildly, critics weren't impressed with this game, and for example, a score of 510 was relatively positive considering many other reviews. Delta Force, Extreme 2 Inches, 
uh, is also available on the Steam platform and has an overall rating of mixed, based on 57% positive reviews out of 179. And to add to the frustration, news about the much-anticipated sequel, Delta Force Angel Falls, went quiet. Apparently, in 2011 or 2012, alpha version testing began, but the game was cancelled shortly after. An interesting tidbit is that in 2012, the company Nova Logic filed a lawsuit against Activision, accusing them of using the Delta Force name in the game Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. They argued that such actions could mislead consumers and tarnish their reputation. However, the following year, the court ruled in favour of Activision, and Nova Logic lost the case. Then, on October 31st, 2016, THQ Nordic, a game developer and publisher, acquired all of Novologic's assets and also made a minority share purchase from Electronic Arts. After the transaction, the Novologic name wasn't used, but TTQ Nordic revived the Comanche brand, presenting a new installment available in early access in 2020. August 2023 brought the news of THQ Nordic selling the rights to the Delta Force series to Tencent Games. Tencent decided to revive the series and announced the return of the game as Delta Force. Hawk Ops, presented as a free-to-play, large-scale first-person shooter with cross-platform gaming and a single-player campaign mode. It's set to debut in early 2024. The developers promise a modern recreation of the campaign from perhaps the most fondly remembered installment, Delta Force Black Hawk Down, finally with up-to-date graphics. It's expected to be cinematic and grand in scope. In the materials shared by the developers, there's also an expansive multiplayer mode set in the future, which seems to be the main attraction. However, as many people have pointed out, it looks more like the latest Battlefield or Call of Duty installment, and lacks the original Delta Force spirit. Characters will be divided into classes with various abilities, etc. A contemporary standard. Everything looks so futuristic. Interestingly, aside from its release on major platforms, the game is also set to launch on mobile devices. My only concern is potential microtransactions, which typically aren't something players would eagerly welcome. I don't know, maybe fans will love the new game, or it will introduce new players to the series. It could happen, so I don't want to ride it off just yet. Uh, I think it deserves a chance after so many years since the last installment. And that wraps up this piece. If you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and give the video a thumbs up. Leave a comment about which game series you'd like me to discuss next and share your memories of the Delta Force series. Until next time.